Dr. Supriya is going to perform a capsule laser. I think this is probably the first capsule laser surgery. Am I right, Dr. Supriya? Sir, can you hear me? We can hear. Can you yes. hear us? Yes. Okay, great. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Yes, this is the first uh, live surgery, right? Live, this, yes, this is the first live surgery of capsule laser. And uh, hopefully I can demonstrate this technology to all of you. As you can see, if you can see this laser attached to the microscope, there are a few advantages. It is uh, a laser cataract surgery. It's another different platform. The laser is directly attached on the microscope. So the uh, footprint in the OR is virtually none. You don't have a big system that you need to accommodate uh, for space. And it's a 590 nanometer solid state laser. It's an orange laser. Um, so we'll just demonstrate. You can shift the patient. Shift the patient. All right. I'll also be using the um, the my loop or the me loop microscope. Microscope. Okay, so this is a mature intumescent cataract, and uh, the eye has been, a subtenon block has been given for this case. So I'm just going to try and get the eye into the position. Again, I'm using the full uh, surgical cockpit uh, from Carl Zeiss Meditech, the uh, Cotera 700, the RTVO 800, the Callisto system. I'm wearing my 3D glasses, as you can see. All right, so this is a mature intumescent cataract. I hope everyone can see and I hope it's in focus. It's all good here. Why did you decide to give a block to this patient? So I'm just going to get the eye into the correct position. The block has been given and it's slightly downturned. It's important that the eye is in the right position for this laser. All right, let's start. So this patient is a little uncooperative. She has a mature intumescent cataract and is not fixating well, which is why I've decided to block the case. Okay, we are starting. All right, so that's the side port. This side port helps me also keep the eye in the right position, making the main incision there. So I'm just using a little bit of intracameral xylocaine and adrenaline. This is just to prevent the iris from becoming floppy. And just using plain HPMC on the cornea. Okay. So this is a trypan blue dye of a higher concentration. So I'm just going to go in and inject the trypan blue dye. After injecting the dye, we actually have to wait for about 60 seconds. Just going to inject adequately. Yes. So the staining for this capsule laser system is extremely important. We need to make sure that the staining is even all over the capsule and that it's adequate. So the 60 seconds is very important. Once the staining is adequate and even all over the capsule, you get a nice uh, free floating anterocapsulorexis. For this case, I'll be using the Zeiss CT Lucia Lens 621P uh, of plus 23 diopters. And I'll also be using the Me Loop to break the cataract. But Supriya, why did you prefer to put the HPMC initially and then the dye? Uh, yes. You had an okay. option of putting the dye first under the air, which stains the capsule more intensely. Yes, sir. so you can see, see that the staining is quite intense. This is actually required for the uh, adequate firing of the laser. It's important for the adequate firing of the laser. Okay, so this is uh, sodium hyaluronate. Okay, it's important to fill the eye well. I'm just using a fixation ring, the laser please. So, so the laser is slid into position. So as you can see, now the laser is in position. And I'm just using the different foot pedal to switch on the laser. 
Can you see the ring? I'm using a fixation ring to get the eye into the right position. And I'm just focusing the laser. The two dots need to focus on the anterior capsule. Okay. Can you see the anterior capsule? Because all we see is a black wall. Yeah. So I'm also, it's not very clearly seen, but you can see the red dots that are clearly focused on the anterior capsule. Can you see the red dots? There are <coughs> For us, it is not in the center. It's slightly to the right side of the center. Maybe it's a parallax. Camera, par no, now we can see it coming. Now can you side. see? Yeah. Yeah, the red dots are visible. The two of them are so visible the two red in the cornea, the two of them are on the capsule. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Two of the red dots are on the cornea, two of them are on the capsule. It's important to focus on the dots on the capsule. So it just takes about one third of a second for this laser to fire. So just observe, I'm stabilizing the eye now. Okay. So you can see that the laser is fired. It's a little bit uneven there. I'm just going to use a forceps to complete the rexis. Gadayati, madam. Yeah, it's complete. Just using a micro rexis forceps. floating rex is slightly off center but it'll it this works so as you can see the edges of this cap uh, this rexis are much stronger than a manual cap capsulorexis or a femtorexis it's a freely rotating nucleus okay let's go Milo. Okay. So I'm going to be using the my loop. So this is a nitinol loop. It has a sliding actuation button, which we slide. Just inserted the my loop. It's important to get a good hydro dissection so that there is a plane. The loop opens up to 10.5 mm, so you open it up under the capsule. You can see that silvery reflex. It's important to use a second instrument here. Just using a second instrument to stabilize the nucleus. It's quite a soft lens, soft intumescent lens. Okay, so one cut is actually adequate for such cases because it cheese wires. So we have we have bisected the nucleus now into two heminuclei. Yeah, quadrant quarter. Now I'm using the Quatera 700. My settings are I'm in the vacuum mode. My settings are 650 vacuum. The flow rate automatically, the flow rate depends on the vacuum. You can't set your flow rate in this mode. Okay, so I'm just going to, I'm just going to clear out that whatever cortex was there. We have one through and through chop. Just going to bury and chop that heminucleus. So we have two nice quadrants there, which I'm just now eating up. It's quite a soft cataract for a mature cataract, intumescent. Just feeding the pieces into the probe and keeping my chopper above the pieces so that the pieces don't hit the endothelium. I'm 
I'm just giving very little FACO here. It's mainly a vacuum-based cataract removal. All right. Just using some HPMC. Yeah. So as you can see, the positioning of the eye is very important while using this laser. Although it's slightly decentered, this will still do. The cataract was easily removed, and it's quite a strong capsulorexis margin. I'm just doing the cortical wash. I like to use a coaxial IA. All right, just doing a hydro polish just to clean up any residual fibers on the poster capsule there. It looks clean. So I'm using the Zeiss CT Lucia lens, which we use regularly. We've done hundreds of cases on the CT Lucia. Just using a fixation here. So it's a completely preloaded uh, monofocal lens. It has a 360 degree square edge. I'm just fixating the eye with my left hand there because it's downturned a little bit. I'm doing a wound assisted injection, slow deliberate injection into the bag. There we go. Just sliding that lens into the bag. Yeah. And doing the visco removal. So you see the lens opens up beautifully. It has a step vaulted design. And uh, the space between the, the angle between the optic and haptic has been increased in this design so that it promotes the capsula back contact with the haptics. It has excellent rotational stability and very low PCO rates. Yeah. The lens looks well centered and stable in the back. And that's the end of the surgery. Just hydrating the ports gently. So yes, that, that was the capsule laser system. It has some distinct advantages of being a very small and convenient laser that you can just attach to your microscope and use for capsulotomies. Dr. Supriya, congratulations for doing the first slice surgery of this laser. You did a marvelous job. Thank you so Thank much, sir. I have a couple of questions here. Before asking you, I just want to ask Dr. Ronald about what do you think is the future of this new technology? Well, I think uh, it's nice to have other options apart from the expensive flags. I've tried the Zepto laser and it, it, it wasn't as good as I had hoped it to be. And this one looks promising. Although I don't quite understand, Supriya. Yes, sir. You know, in, when we normally put Tripan Blue to do a normal manual capsule rexis, we put it in under air and then we'll flush it out and we leave the dye to stain the capsule through which we tear. But in this case, you were putting it under the OVD. And no, how, no, no. how do you ensure it spreads out when OVD is in the eye and you leave it in, which makes the visualization difficult? There was no OVD in the uh, antra chamber. So the reason I used OVD on top of the cornea was that, yes. was that this was, you know, uh, this is a, a much higher concentration of tripan blue. It's 0.4% and we normally use 0.016%. So it's quite, it's All like right. four times the strength of tripan blue which uh, can stain the epithelium, it can stain the endothelium. So uh, just to avoid staining of the incisions and epithelium too much, I just put HPMC on the surface and then injected the dye into the AC. So the AC is basically full yes. of dye yeah. rather than any HPMC or air. I mean, what about under air? Would that not protect the endothelium? Yeah, so uh, the reason we don't use air in this is because we want an even staining. So what, what happens sometimes when we have an air bubble 
is that you get a differential staining on the yeah. capsule. And uh, when you look at it, it's, it's, uh, it's all right for your visual reference to make a manual rexis, yeah. but the laser doesn't really recognize unless it's evenly stained in this particular uh, technology. So that's why we don't use an air bubble. Dr. Bianchi, uh, if you have to put a multifocal lens in this patient, you note that the capsule, uh, capsulotomy is a little smaller in size, little eccentric. Would you be happy to, to put a multifocal lens or would you like to extend the... Uh, I think that I will extend it a little bit, yes, because if uh, the multifocal is <coughs> concentrate, it's a big problem because it's not uh, only the refractive uh, halos, also uh, can have coma and another problem. But I think the, the, the laser for capsulotomy is very good for intumescent and cataract to, to reduce the risk of Argentinian flag. I think it would be one of, one of the best indications in these cases. Dr. Supriya, what is the difference between the capsulotomy done by this technique vis-a-vis -vis the femtolaser? Sir, I can't hear you too well. Uh, what is the difference in the capsulotomy architecture, the capsule edge of the capsulotomy and the high magnification, if there are studies done. So this laser basically coagulates the uh, tissue. So it's different from the femto laser where there is a femto laser cut or a manual rexis where you know you shear, uh, you tear the capsule. So the strongest is when the edges are coagulated. There is no chance of a, a split or a runoff of the anterior capsule. Uh, but then a manual uh, capsulorexis is any day stronger than a femtorexis. So this would be stronger than a manual, but a manual would be stronger than a femtorexis, just in terms of the chances of it giving way. Okay. Uh, this is an intumescent cataract, and yes. we expect the zonules to be a little weaker here. Yes. What are the chances for a coagulated edge of the rexis contracting tomorrow and causing a phimosis? So we keep it a little bigger, the rexis, we keep it at about 5.8 just to prevent the chances of phimosis. Uh, but intumescent cataracts are an excellent indication for this particular laser, which is why I took up this case. Uh, because when it's intumescent, you, you know, you don't want to do a manual rexis because of chances of runoff, you want to do a femto. And uh, even this, this is easily attachable to the uh, microscope and it would be an excellent use of uh, this laser for intumescent cataracts just to prevent a runoff. Dr. Ronald observed that the working distance would decrease. Is it so? Because we, we saw that the laser was, the attachment was coming quite below the objective lens. Yes, yes, yes. So basically there is an attachment to the microscope which uh, uh, makes the uh, oculars go up a little bit, which is why it's much easier to use it in the 3D. Of course, you can use it with the normal uh, oculars. It's easier for slightly taller people. I'm a little short. Uh, so I used it with the 3D because if I have to have another uh, lens, my neck cranes up. But then other than that, you know, it's, um, it's a wonderful uh, small footprint laser to have in the UR. Do you have any options of adjusting the diameter of the rexis in this uh, capsule laser? Yes, option sir. We, we have the option of setting the diameter of the rex. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank, Thank you. you, everyone. Uh, next will be a dislocated IOL back complex, which will be tackled by Dr. Shri Ganesh. Welcome, Dr. Shri, again.